honestly, I felt a responsibility to share my story. Um, I know what it was like to grow up, you know, feeling alone and like I was the only person in the world that felt this way and to have no support network and to be afraid to come out and tell anyone, you know, knowing the stigma and knowing the negative reactions that would happen. So, it, you know, having the opportunity to have a platform and have a voice and be able to, to you know, communicate this to people, I, I feel a responsibility to be open and honest about my story. And, I, you know, I don't want anyone else to have to go through everything I went through. And, uh, you know, for Fortunately, we are moving forward, but there's still a long ways to go. And, and I think visibility is such a huge thing because anytime we talk about like you, you hear conversation about how many trans people there are or how many LGBT people there are, I always say the same thing. We have no idea because there are still so many people that are terrified to be open and honest and that are still closeted. And then within the trans community, because of the stigma, because of discrimination and because of the risk of violence, we have so many people that transition, then move and start their lives over and live in what we call stealth. No one knows they're transgender. So they integrate back into society and no one has any idea. And so those people are basically invisible. And, and as an individual, I completely understand that decision and they do it for their own safety and, and to avoid discrimination. But at the same time, it keeps us as a community, it keeps us invisible and it makes people think there's a lot less of us than there actually are. And I, I would wager to say that almost every single person knows someone that's trans. They just don't know that. It could be someone in their everyday lives or it might be someone that's still hiding, that's totally afraid to be open and honest or someone that's already transitioned and they have no idea. But it, it's just way more common than anyone knows. By the time I was five or six years old, I knew. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know how to put words to it. And I didn't know how to explain it. But by the time I was five or six, I was already fantasizing about being female. And, um, and it made me feel guilty and ashamed. By that age, I'd already learned that it wasn't okay to feel that way and that it was going to be met with very negative feelings if I shared those things. And I couldn't understand why. I would just, you know, fantasize about doing the same things I always did, like playing sports and things like that. But I would just see myself as female doing them. And I thought about this nonstop. It was constant every single day. And uh, it, 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 you know, it made my life very difficult and um, was a huge burden to carry all through my adolescence, my teenage years. And I couldn't walk through a department store without feeling torn. I wanted to go over to the makeup counters. I wanted to look at the shoes and purses. But, and I felt guilty and ashamed and like there was something wrong with me for feeling that way. And so it just tormented me forever. I, I would be sitting in class in my football uniform and, you know, be looking at the cheerleaders and wondering what it'd like to be like to be them. And um, so this was just something. I dealt with my entire life and was a huge burden to carry around for a really long period of time. Yeah, I did not even have that be an option. I mean, I, I knew, you know, even at a young age that it, w it wasn't okay to tell people. And if I told people how I felt, it was there was going to be very bad reactions. So, you know, and like I said, there was just, and, and unfortunately that led to a lot of internalized shame and self-hatred. And I felt like there was something wrong with me. I felt like I was broken. I felt like I was unlovable. I didn't think anyone would ever want me. So yeah, it, it made life really tough. Hey, um, you know, that it was a process. So basically, I didn't tell anyone until I was 23 years old. And I told my first wife and I told her when we were just friends before we even started dating. And um, initially, she was supportive, but that didn't last very long. And, and then her reaction turned very negative. And then I, so I went back to suppressing it again, because I was still feeling lots of guilt and shame about it. Um, but then I just basically got to a point about 10 years later where I couldn't do it anymore. And it was just tearing me apart every day. I'd be driving to work, bawling my eyes out and um, it, yeah it got really really hard and so it just got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore and um, so then at that point then it was just like okay I have to start dealing with this and figure things out and and um, so then for me transition like stopped and started so many times because I felt a need to do it but there were so many obstacles in the way and I had built such a a, you know, a good life around this masculine persona that, you know, people thought that's all of who I was. And, you know, in the Marines, I worked in presidential security and powerlifting. I broke world records and won world championships. You know, I was on the cover of magazines and, you know, life was going very, very well. And, and I was just afraid that everything would come toppling down if I came out. And I was also, the problem was too, is because of the success, success I achieved and coming from a small town, that so many people looked up to me and so many people respected me. And so I felt all this pressure to not disappoint them. And of course, looking back now, I, I don't, I totally don't see it that way. But at the time, that's how I felt. I felt I'd be letting everyone down and like people would say, Oh, you're so, you know, you're so great. You can do all these things. And in, inside, I felt like you have no idea, you know, the stuff I'm dealing with. 
Um, initially, um, like I said, I, I, I told my ex-wife and like I said, her support didn't last very long. But then after that, like 10 years later, I started slowly coming out to my family and friends and it was very difficult. Like at first, my first really close friend that I told, it took me like three months of conversations to finally tell him because I was so terrified of the reactions. And fortunately he was very supportive. And then I started slowly coming out to my close friends and like my brothers and people one by one. And, and, um, fortunately for me, they were all very supportive and the reactions were all very good. They, everyone was shocked. No one saw that coming. And the weird thing was, I thought like, especially like my mom and my brothers, I thought they're gonna be like, well, you know, we kind of always wondered. We kinda... No, they had no idea. And um, because I felt like my whole life, anytime I, if I did anything that was the least bit feminine, I thought, you know, oh my God, they can tell. Someone's gonna know. Somehow they're gonna be able to figure it out. And it terrified me. But uh, no, no one had any idea. Some of my friends actually thought it was a practical joke that uh, they didn't believe me. And they're like, come on, that's not possible because people thought I was such an alpha male. I would say if there's any advice I can give to people that I'm going to tell them it's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. Um, it's, it's going to be difficult. There's going to be bumps in the road. But in the end, almost every single trans person I know, if they have any regrets, the one regret they have is not embarking on the journey sooner. Um, so it, it's a hard thing and taking those first steps are the, are the most difficult. But, um, but there's something to said for being authentic and being true to yourself. And I think there's nothing that is more fulfilling or more meaningful and allows you to live a better life when you're being true to who you are. That was, I mean, that was a scary process because when you when you agree to do something like that, you give up all rights. There, you don't get a say. So, like people are wondering, well, can't you say you don't want this in or that in? No, that's not how it works. When you agree to do something like this, they have full full control over you know the edi the editing of everything. So you really have to trust the people you're working with and hope that their you know hearts are in the right places and they're going to do the right thing. And fortunately for me, working with Michael, um, you know, he came out and met with me early before we ever turned cameras on or anything and explained to me what he wanted to do and just basically tell my story. And, and, and what you see in Transformer is that there's no editing. There's, I mean, no, not no editing, no scripting. There's no bias. There was no scenes that were set up. There's nothing. They weren't like, oh, let's do this or see this angle. It was all just them following me around for two, two and a half years and uh, basically filming my life and then putting it together. And, and uh, so everything you see is completely authentic. And for me, people ask like, well, how does that feel watching this movie? And I'm like, honestly, it's like we're watching an hour and a half long um, home, home video, you know? Now, this is just my life. You see me and my sons and you see the amazing bond we have and you see the, you know, some of the procedures I underwent and the struggles I go through. You see me talking to my parents and this is just all real stuff and day-to-day -day life for me. Um, yeah, my mom's reaction. Um, so, so my mom had known for a decade, for 10 years, I had told her and she refused to, to see me, you know, presenting as female and was very uncomfortable with it. And I tried to talk to her and initially, like I said, look, I know this is confusing. I know you don't understand, you know, here's books you can read. If you have any questions, I'll answer everything. You know, these are, here's videos you can watch. And, and, um, you know, and initially I, I understood it was going to be difficult for her, but, but she never, she never took any interest in any of that. And anytime I tried to have a conversation, she avoided it. And, um, and then some of the things she said in, in, you know, you'll see on camera, um, that, that was the first time I ever heard those things. And she would never, like I said, she refused to really talk to, talk to me about it. When I would try to bring it up, she just changed the subject. So hearing her say that she felt like it was me dying, um, was, yeah, it wasn't the easiest thing to hear. You know, it's not, not, not the reaction you want from your parents. And, um, but yeah, that was, that was surprising to me that, that that's how she viewed things and it was difficult to hear. And unfortunately, I don't know that her views have changed a whole lot, but hopefully they will in time. Okay, so now, so I'm back working in pharmacy again. Um, I took a job at a hospital, a really great place, and everyone's been very supportive. And, and it was nice because it was the first time interviewing for a job as myself. And that's, this is how everyone knows me. So there's no hiding and there's no, you know, stuff from before in my life. So that's very nice. And, and then um, also I'm doing lots of speaking and lots of education. I'm speaking at colleges and universities and um, conferences, you know, women's conferences, all kinds of things, you know, anything related to strength training, um, intersexual feminism, things like that. Those are things I'm all very passionate about. And uh, so those are great opportunities and things I'm excited about. You know, and then there's a lot of stuff going on, obviously with the documentary premiering on Friday, and then it'll be available online and a whole bunch of sources. And I just really hope this opens up more doors to share my story with people and to hopefully educate people that don't understand and inspire people like me. 
Yeah, there's so many people out there and I get messages from them every day on social media all the time. I talk with so many people and yeah, I would love to start something like that, especially transgender children. And you know, that's something I'm very passionate about because I know how hard that struggle is. And then I'm also writing um, an autobiography. So if people see the movie and they're interested in hearing more of my story, it's going to talk about everything that happened during the movie and, and my entire life, my time in the Marines, the my powerlifting career, um, and then things that are going on now since the movie has ended. So I'm, I want to share that whole story because I just think there's so many things that people can relate to. And whether you're trans or not, this is really, my life is really just a, a story about someone trying to figure out who they are and be authentic to themselves, which I think we all go through at some point. And so I think a lot of people can relate to it that otherwise would have no interest in a, you know, transgender story. Yeah, definitely. I agree 100%. And people people tend to fear what they don't understand. And so I think it's a natural reaction and it's an unfortunate reaction, but that's how it is. We, we Things that we don't understand scare us. So, And if people aren't willing to be open and aren't willing to be honest, how do we expect people to understand? So that's why I think it's so important to be visible, be open, be honest, and answer questions because otherwise people don't get it. And then we're just represented by talk shows and other things that are sensationalized and all people see is this really negative image of trans people and that's not what we're like. So I I think it's, it's just so important to be open, honest, and visible. At this point in my life, the, the fact that I have an opportunity to have a platform, I, I feel a responsibility to you know, be a voice for anyone I can be. Uh, Janae Marie Croc, and that's Croc with K-R-O-C on Instagram, um, on Facebook as well, and Janae Croc on Twitter. And uh, my website's JanaeCroc.com, and uh, there'll be lots of things coming in the future.